So here I'm at the main panel. You can see where the power company installed this smart meter so that the meter will run backwards. You can see it says received there. I think you can see that. 0.385 kilowatts is going back onto the grid right now. Even though I only have six panels, it is midday. I'll also show you the warning labels. This is the warning label on the main panel. This is the warning label the power company actually installed when they installed the smart meter. Conduit labels, which actually aren't required for AC, only DC, but doesn't hurt. AC disconnect warning label. And then further up here, you'll see the junction box warning label. I think you can catch that. All right, here's my installation about a year and a half afterwards. You can see they're a little bit dusty, which may have impacted my power a little bit, not sure. I'll show you the results here in a bit, where I may be losing a little bit of power over a year and a half, but overall haven't had really any major issues with it. One experiment I want to show you here is I'm going to cool one of these panels with some water, and I'll show you what the impact of cooling these things down with temperature, cooling the temperature down does to the actual power generation. So just by cooling one, leaving the other ones as a control, you can see what the impact is. So I've actually got to do this for a while for it to log the data. It only logs once every five minutes. Okay, here is a summary of the power output of the six panel system. You can see the lifetime here at 3.99, so I'm about to cross four megawatt hours. At 30 cents per kilowatt hour, the high tier rate in California, this would be $1,200 saving so far for the system, but uh, probably not all of that's in the high tier, so I'm looking at maybe a little over $1,000 saving so far. As you can see, power varies depending on what time of year. In the winter, it starts to get down to only two or three kilowatt hours per day. In the summer, I get over nine. I was actually looking and the peak for the system was May 22nd, 2013 at 9,787 watt hours, which I have detailed or zoomed in on the next tab and looking at the peak output which is 1.26 kilowatts these are 235 watt panels with m215 in phase inverters which actually cl clip out at around i think 225 and you can see even in max peak i'm not reaching that so no clipping involved you can see the outer panels are at 213 and 219 and they produce more power than the inner ones basically because this outer edge on each side is open to free air so they run a little bit cooler and on the next slide, I actually show the data from that experiment or that I was uh, conducting in, earlier in the video. You can see the outer panels are at 157. And basically, I was cooling this left panel. So I'm going to step through five minute increments, goes to 164, and then actually peaked at 173, which is 12.5% higher. So this is pretty extreme where this one's at its hottest, this one's cooled with water, which is the most extreme temperature difference I could create and that's showing about a 12 and a half percent due to temperature just to give you an idea of what temperature affects since people were commenting about that in the comment section. Next thing I want to show is usage. This is a zoom in for a particular day Friday October 10th and just to get an idea of what the power looks like throughout the day. Here I'm at night 12 a.m. to about 5 or 6 a.m. you can basically see the refrigerator cycling off and on People wake up, turn on lights, get ready in the morning, then people are leaving, turning off lights, and then the sun comes up. And basically everything below zero here, this is where I'm putting power back onto the grid. And then sun goes down, people come home, some cooking, etc., lights, and this is where I'm pulling from the grid. So it's kind of cool. You can zoom in and, and basically you know, see what's going on with your panels. And when it's cloudy, of course, you don't, you don't see this. Last thing I want to show is the rolling yearly power output for the system. I've been trying to figure out how to plot this data to see if I'm losing power output over time. Basically pulled the raw data off the Enphase website and this is yearly moving average. This is April to April, May to May, June 2013 to 2014, etc. up to September. And you do see there is a downward trend however I was looking at it and it's only one and a half percent difference here but it does look like it could be heading downward. So I'm going to probably use an experiment, get up there and clean them real good and see if, if I see any recovery. Um, the panels might just be losing power uh, just, just with age, but 1.5% isn't too bad, especially since I haven't really cleaned them or anything since I installed them. So that's all I have on the overview of the system so far. Uh, if you'd like to go ahead and subscribe, I have, um, I plan on doing some more videos 
and the next two will most likely be on updates to the system uh, some new products one from snap and rack one from Enphase, that make the installation even easier than when i installed it so basically some videos in case you install it today what to expect and uh, what some of the differences are so if you like go ahead and subscribe thanks